Let's talk about nouns and articles in Italian. The rules for their use are quite complex, actually, but they're very important because nouns and their articles are the building blocks of pretty much any sentence that you will ever say or write. Nouns in English have a number. They are either singular or plural, as in boy and boys. In Romance languages, including in Italian, they also have a gender. This gender can be logical. For example, if you're talking about uh, a man, then the noun will be masculine. If you're talking about a woman, it will be a feminine noun. However, the inanimate objects also have a, a gender in Italian, and that gender is not very logical. Actually, it seems to be quite arbitrary. For example, the book, Libro, is masculine. There's no good reason for it. It just is. Lezione, lesson or class, is feminine. Nouns ending in O are normally masculine, and they form plural in E. Nouns ending in A are normally feminine, and their plural ends in E. Nouns ending in E, in singular, can be masculine or feminine. It depends on the noun itself, but there is always in E. So to recap, nouns can be singular or plural. In masculine, they end in O in singular, E in plural. In feminine, they end in A in singular, E in plural. And those that end in E in singular can be masculine or feminine. They end in E in plural. Now, it would be very nice if all of the Italian nouns actually fell into one of these three categories, but that's not the case. There are several groups of nouns that are very commonly used that actually don't follow these rules. Let's consider all of them. The first one is a group of nouns that end in consonants. Those are actually not Italian words. They were borrowed from different languages. In this particular case, these are all English borrowings. Film, sport, computer, bar. They're all English words. They're pronounced in the Italian way, but they actually do not change from singular to plural. So you would say un film, due film, tre film, quattro film. The second group of nouns that do not change from singular to plural are abbreviated nouns. Foto stands for fotografia. Fotografia ends in a and is feminine. Therefore, foto is feminine. Bici stands for bicicletta, which is feminine. Therefore, bici is feminine. Moto stands for motocicletta which is also feminine. So even though moto appears to be masculine because it ends in O, that's not the case, because it actually stands for motocicletta. Cinema appears to be feminine, but it's not. Cinema is short for cinematografo, which is masculine. So cinema is masculine. Radio stands for radiofonia, which is feminine. Therefore, radio is feminine. So these nouns, again, they do not change from singular to plural. You would say una foto, due foto, tre foto, etc. The last group of nouns that don't follow these uh, rules are those that end in accented vowels. Uh, they can be masculine or feminine. There's no way of telling by just looking at the noun, but you will learn their gender as you're studying the language. Città is feminine, café is masculine, università is feminine, and there are many more. Those nouns also do not change from singular to plural. With nouns, we use articles. The indefinite article in English is a or a or an. And in Italian as well as in English, it is used when talking about something that is not specified or something that is mentioned for the first time. For example, in English, you would say, he is a boy, or I would like to read a book about Italy. In Italian, the forms of the indefinite article are a little bit more complicated. The most common indefinite article is un, and it would be used with most masculine nouns. Professore, un professore, un cinema, un bar, un libro, un tavolo, un cane, un gatto, whatever the case may be. The exception to that are those nouns that begin with particular consonant combinations. So we always have to look at the letters which begin the noun. For example, S followed by a consonant, ST, 
S C S P S M S L S N. Those nouns will use the article uno only because it is much easier to say uno studente than it is to say un studente. So S consonant requires the article uno, and so do the words that begin with a Z. Uno, zaino, uno, zio, etc. There are some other masculine nouns that require the use of uno, those beginning with a Y or PS or GN. Those are not so common. In feminine, the situation is a little bit different. Una is the most common indefinite article, and it will be used with almost all of feminine nouns. The exception to that are only those that begin with a vowel. Vowels in Italian are A, E, E, O, U. Those nouns will require the elided article, UN apostrophe, which is just una elided to un with the apostrophe, and this is pronounced as one word, unamica. The definite article presents even more forms than the indefinite article. The definite article is used when talking about something that has already been contextualized or something that is specific and we know what we're referring to. For example, in English, the definite article is the or the, and you could use it in a sentence such as the book I'm reading is a book about Italy, and you know what book you're talking about. Masculine nouns can use three different types of definite articles, but the most common form is il. Il is used with the overwhelming majority of masculine nouns. Il professore, il bar, il tavolo, etc. However, those same nouns that begin with specific consonant combinations, such as S followed by a consonant or a Z, they will require the article lo only because it is much easier to pronounce. Again, the same reason. Lo studente is easier to say than il studente, and that's why it's used. Also, the nouns beginning with a vowel will require the elided L apostrophe article. It is pronounced as one word, l'amico. Definite articles, unlike indefinite articles, also exist in plural. Those words that require the article il in singular will require the article e in plural. So e is by far the most common definite article for masculine nouns. I professori, i bar, i tavoli, etc. All of the other nouns, special consonant combinations or vowels, they will require the article gli. The pronunciation of gli is a little bit tricky. If you pronounce the word million, Somewhere in the middle of that word, there is a sound L. This is sort of what this sounds like. Gli. Gli studenti, gli stadi, gli zaini, gli zii, etc. And also gli amici. The feminine definite article only has two forms. La is the most common one. It's used with literally everything, all of the feminine nouns, feminine nouns, except those beginning with a vowel, where la is elided to l apostrophe, l'amica. Feminine form has only one option in plural. It is le for all of feminine nouns. This information can be found on a handout that is on Blackboard. Look it up under Documenti e Materiali in folder called Unità 1. The name of the file is Nomi e Articoli.